A lot of my students have been asking why I've switched from Moto to Blender lately. And this is a tough question because Moto was my first love in modeling software. I had tried Maya, Max, Rhino, Alias, and then Moto came along and swept me off my feet. And it was love at first sight and we frolicked into the sunset. Really though, the interface of Moto is a work of art. It's beautiful. And so I got really comfortable with Moto and was using it every day for work in animation and video games and eventually taught Moto for a few years. So it was a big part of my livelihood. And during this time, I had a few friends who were really excited about Blender, kind of evangelical almost, little uh, Jehovah's Witnesses telling everybody the good word. And I thought, well, that's cute. It's free, um, so it's probably garbage. Uh, but they eventually wore me down and I decided to give it a try. And it surprised me. There's built-in GPU rendering, which is really, really fast. There's Boolean modifiers, which sort of blew my mind at the time. I know uh, Moto has brought that on since then, but these modifiers let you change your, your design after the fact. Like you can be more flexible in your designs. You can move stuff around, move big cuts around and it doesn't destroy your model. Um, so that was a, a cool feature. There was the video editor, compositor, motion tracking, even a, a whole game engine built into Blender. So it's just a huge program. There's, there's so much functionality built into it. It's sort of like a, 10 programs built into one. Whereas Moto, on the other hand, has less stuff, but it is very, very laser focused and polished on modeling. You can even hear it in the name Moto. The name says has modeling in it. So yeah, it, it, it was very, very streamlined and smooth and polished for modeling. And the way it does that is by sort of anticipating what you want to do um, when, when you're using certain tools. Like for an example, uh, when you want to delete something in Blender, you hit X and it brings up a menu that says, oh, do you want to delete verts, edges, faces, objects, etc.?" And you have to choose which one you want. So that's a two-step process right there. In Moto, if you want to delete something, you just hit delete and it's gone. And it knows depending on if you have an object selected or if you have an edge selected or if you have a face selected, you probably want to delete a face. If you have an edge selected, you probably want to delete, delete an edge. So it's kind of more contextual in that way and it anticipates what the user wants to do and kind of takes some extra steps out by anticipating like that. So that's definitely something that I missed from Modo. Um, but through the magic of scripting and making Pi menus and just kind of trying to reconfigure the Blender interface, I was able to get a lot of that contextual usability back into Blender. So I feel like I got to pretty much to a stage where I feel comfortable um, in terms of speed of modeling with Blender and Moto. So that was a long process. That took about a year and change of just tweaking the UI. I was working at Sony at the time and just like comparing, I had Moto and Blender installed on the, at the same time and I was just like going back and forth and some things would just be really annoying hangups in Blender that would take like three or four clicks. But in Moto, it's only one click or just, yeah, just getting fun little basic functions that you do over and over and over again and putting them into scripts so it, it runs through the whole, uh, the four steps all at once in one key and also making a lot of pie menus so that uh, helps you to organize functions that are supposed to be together in your mind and in modeling and, and puts them together so it it's kind of makes more organizational sense. Um, so that's what I tried to do for about a year. I tried a bunch of different key configurations and tried to make it work for tablets and for left-handed, right-handed and everything. So yes, that's the main difference in terms of uh, scope of the programs and the functionality. Um, Blender is bigger, but it is a little bit, it feels a little bit cobbled together and less focused. Blender, uh, sorry, Moto is more focused, but uh, smaller. And this also mirrors sort of their development process. So of course, Blender is famous for being open source and um, it's free, it's made by, it's 
contributed to by developers around the world, a big uh, group of developers. So, so there's a lot of features in it, but they're coming from different people who might not have the benefit, the luxury of, um, you know, the same amount of communication and teamwork as maybe the Moto team, which is all under one roof, you know, at at headquarters, and they all get to have their meetings and talk together and discuss things and make sure that everything is very cohesive and and consistent. So, yeah, that that kind of shows, and it makes sense in the in the interfaces of the two programs. There's the different modules in Blender, which are written by different people. Sometimes they don't exactly match up, and they don't. Um, yeah, they're not consistent. So, yeah, I think the the cool thing though that's happening right now is that Blender 2.8, which is the new Blender coming out soon, they've uh, managed to get and hire a few of the core developers and bring them all together um, under one roof in Amsterdam. So these guys are currently working to to make Blender a lot more consistent and cohesive. And uh, that whole UI focus is being led by Bill Rainish, and he's doing an amazing job so far of just, he has really good ideas on how to modernize the UI and simplify things and make things more logical. So I'm very, very excited to see the, the developments that are coming from Bill and the people at the Blender In Institute. So, yes, I think that's all I have to say. Um, I hope this helps. And again, both are really great programs. So, um, yeah. But again, in the future, I think Blender may have an advantage because they are trying to modernize it and consolidate it. There's features like EV, and um, I don't know. There's a lot of huge improvements happening for 2.8, while on the Moto side, I haven't been totally following the development lately, but it seems like uh, upgrades are a little bit more incremental. Um, also, the, the really cool thing about open source versus closed source is that Blender is released every single day. They, they do improvements, they, they can fix bugs, you can report something to them, they fix it, and then the next day, there's a new build of, of Blender, always, every single day. So you, so you can be on your way again with the fixed bug. Um, while for something like Moto or other uh, closed source programs, it's usually going to take you know half a year or a year to get a new update with all the bug fixes. So that's definitely a win for open source. So with all that stuff uh, considered, I hope that helps you to get a feeling of, of which one's better for you. And I, uh, I guess my final suggestion is to just download both of them, at least a trial, and play around a little bit and see what you think. And good luck.